The number one fear I hear from women who desire a natural birth is, I am afraid of the pain. Can I actually do this? I don't even know if I can actually do this. I want to have a natural birth, but I really don't know because I've heard so many stories about how painful it is, how excruciating it is, and I don't, really, I don't know if I can actually do this. And I understand that managing the pain of labor is probably one of the biggest concerns that most women have when it comes to having their first child. In this video, I'm going to share some of my foolproof tips that have helped my clients navigate labor with comfort, even without me in the room, allowing them to have a competent and comfortable labor. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. My name is Chanel. I am a believer, I am a wife, I am a mama of four, and I am your virtual doula. Now, all five tips that I'm going to share in this video have come exactly from the strategy that I use with every single one of my clients that we've been able to apply for their particular birth plan. And as we walk through some of these strategies that I have taught to families all across the world, it has helped many of my clients avoid getting an epidural and really having the natural birth that they desired from the very start. Now on this channel, you're going to get evidence-based information as well as real life experiences. I help couples all around the world who desire to have a natural birth and actually want to do it alone. And instead of having a doula in the room with them, they want their partners to be that main support person, that main support role, that daddy doula. But because of the overwhelming amount of information online and even some of the fears that they have about pain, how to do this, how to have a natural birth, how to navigate the hospital system. They want somebody to guide them through that process. And so as a virtual doula, I support my clients educationally and provide online coaching with them throughout their entire pregnancies to ensure that mama knows how to do her job, which is trusting her body to do what it was designed to do and allowing the partner to do their role and equipping them to do that so that they can keep mama comfortable. So that this can be an intimate experience so that they can advocate for themselves in the hospital setting with their providers to really navigate the birth experience that they want. So if this is you and you wanna have this experience with just your partner, but you wanna make sure that you have all of the tools and knowledge to actually do this, I have dropped my link in the description below where you can learn more about my program and learn more about what it means and what it looks like to work with a virtual doula so that you and your partner are equipped for this natural birth experience. Now I wanna be clear before we jump into these five tips that Getting an epidural is not a failure to your birth plan. It does not mean that you did not do it. Getting an epidural is a choice, and it is important that we understand that every woman has a choice to the type of birth experience that they want, whether that is medicated or unmedicated, or if that just means that your plan changes. What's most important to me as a virtual doula and somebody who supports families through this entire journey is that you have the tools. You know the options, you know your rights, you know what you can utilize to avoid the epidural as long as possible if that is your desire. And I have found that equipping my clients with the tools and the knowledge necessary has allowed them to actually labor much longer, if not the entire process, unmedicated. And if they did choose to get the epidural, it was because they had exhausted every single option before that point. All right, now let's jump into these five tips. Tip number one is understanding your fears. One of the most important things that I have to work on with every single one of my clients is overcoming their fears and getting them mentally prepared for birth. Birth is 80% mental and 20% physical, and a lot of people wanna fight me for that, but it is true. When we talk about the pain of labor, that is the thing that is the most prevalent in the conversations when it comes to natural birth and the pain that comes along with labor. But the reality is, if your mind is not in the right place, you're absolutely going to experience a painful labor. And becoming mentally prepared for birth starts with addressing the fears that you may have when it comes to birth. Pain being probably one of the biggest ones, tearing being another one, even being able to make it out alive is another fear that a lot of my clients have dealt with at the beginning of this process. And the truth of the matter is, if you do not address those fears at the very beginning of your pregnancy or even sometime throughout the pregnancy, they will most likely show up in labor. And the reality is, if they show up in labor, that is going to throw your whole mind into the wrong place when you need to be in a calm, grounded place in labor. So addressing your fears is extremely important for you and for your partner at the beginning of this whole process of prep because if you do not address them, they will affect you. And if you have never heard of the fear, tension, pain cycle, this explains it very, very well. What the fear, tension, pain cycle explains is that if you have some sort of fear that you have not addressed, there is some level of anticipation that will happen 
when this sort of fear shows up or seems familiar. If you see something or you anticipate a fear coming true, if you see something that reminds you of that fear, especially in labor, or you are afraid of your contractions, that is going to cause tension in the body. And if you have tension in the body, that is going to cause you to experience more pain because now instead of your body going with the flow of what's going on, your body is fighting against what's happening in your body. And that will cause you to have more pain or experience more pain. And that is so true in labor. And I can talk about it firsthand. I can talk about it from the clients that I've worked with. The clients who were really confident and overcame their fears and understood the facts around some of their fears and really became knowledgeable about what their options were, how to navigate this process, how to become confident and fearless about this process, were the ones who labored comfortably and confidently and actually didn't use the word pain at all to describe their labor. It might have been intense, but it wasn't painful. And there are two completely different experiences between intensity and pain. And speaking from somebody who has had a painful birth and has had a pain-free birth, there is a very distinct difference. When I had a painful birth, it was because I was afraid of the contractions. I was anticipating them coming. When they started, I started to tense up and fight against them and it caused the contraction to be more painful because my body was not flowing with what was happening. It wasn't accepting or embracing what was happening. Versus when I had a pain-free birth, I allowed the wave to happen. I rode with the wave. I rode with the contraction. And yes, it was intense, but it didn't overtake me because I wasn't afraid of it. I embraced it, I accepted it, and I moved with the contraction. And that allowed my body to flow more naturally in labor and it allowed my labor to be a lot faster because I wasn't fighting against it and my baby did not have to fight against or work through the tension that I was carrying or experiencing. So it is extremely important to address those fears, not only to write them down, but to actually work through them. And I have a complete five-step strategy with my clients that I use to help them work through their fears so that when those do try to creep up at the end, if they try to creep up again in labor, that we've already worked through them. The partners understand their fears and they can help them work through those very quickly. And we have strategies around how to keep ourselves in the right state of mind throughout the entire labor process, which ultimately allows us to have a more comfortable process because we are more confident. Tip number two is practicing mindfulness techniques. Now you may be hearing this a lot when it comes to hypnobirthing. Hypnobirthing is a super, super powerful tool that you should absolutely look into and consider when preparing for birth. It helps to keep your mind in the right place. But remember, if you don't address those fears, I don't care how much hypnobirthing or meditation you do, the fears are still there and they have to be addressed. But this, once you get past that process and that step, hypnobirthing, meditation, mindfulness practices are extremely beneficial when it comes to laboring comfortably and reducing the amount of pain that you experience because your mind is more powerful than your body. Your body will follow what your mind does. So if we can work through stress management techniques in pregnancy, that's breathing techniques. I work with my clients to find a peaceful place that they can go to in labor to keep their mind in the right place. Stress management techniques, this could be breathing, this could be exercise, this could be movements, this could just be stimulants that allow you to stay grounded during this entire process. Whatever that looks like for you, utilize it. But don't just utilize it in birth. You need to practice it in pregnancy. And a lot of us experience some level of stress in pregnancy. So those are the most perfect times for you to whip out some of these mindfulness techniques and practice them. If you already have kids and this is not your first baby, that is also a really good time to practice them because life is stressful. Tip number three is having an informed support person. This is your key player in labor. This is a key person on your birth team. And like I told y'all before, I work with families who want it to just be the two of them in the room. And if your partner is not equipped or informed, it is really difficult for them to support you in labor. So it is important that they're going through this process with you. They're getting educated. They're going through the classes. They are learning what their role is. Not learning just the breathing techniques, not learning just the movements, but learning how to advocate for you learning how to understand where you're at in labor, learning how to keep you comfortable, comfort measures. These things are key to having a comfortable birth. And you may be wondering, well, they're not laboring, so how does that make me feel like I'm in less pain? 
It's their job to help you feel like you're in less pain because they're providing that comfort. The oxytocin that exists between you and your partner is what also helps you achieve a much more pain-free birth. Not everybody's gonna experience a pain-free birth and there's no reason that you should feel like you failed if you didn't have a pain-free birth or that it was intense or you experienced pain. But what I can tell you from experience is that partners who knew how to keep mamas calm in labor, who knew how to touch them in the right place, how to comfort them in the right place, how to ease their mind at the right time, who knew how to get people out of the room because they were distracting mama's mental birthstone, those are the births that are the most smooth, calm, and confident ones. To really be able to trust your partner in this process goes a very, very long way. But if your partner is just kind of doing the bare minimum, there's a good chance that you're not gonna trust them enough to rely on them. You're going to be trying to do all of this by yourself. And that is going to cause you a little bit more stress, which is gonna cause you a little bit more tension, which is gonna cause you a little bit more pain. And we've already talked about the fear tension pain cycle. So it is really, really crucial that you have an informed support person who you know not only loves you, but is equipped with the tools to navigate this individual experience for you. And your partner is your rock. And I call my partners daddy doulas because they do play that role. They are capable of playing that role if they have the tools and the practice and the support to do so. But if your partner is just kind of showing up and they think they're strong and they love you and all the things, you're probably not going to get all that you could get out of them. So make sure that you guys are doing this together just the same way that you made this baby together. Tip number four is comfort measures. Now, comfort measures are really key to staying comfortable. Go figure. But think about birth and labor as a dance between you and your baby and your partner. You three are the key players. You're the team and you're working together. So you wanna make sure that you trust your baby just the same way that your baby trusts you and that you trust your partner in the same way that you trust your baby and that you trust your body. Because all of you need to be working in a rhythm for this experience. Walking, trusting, loving, comforting, breathing. These are all different forms of comfort measures. Your partner's hands are crucial to keeping you comfortable in labor. Water is crucial to keeping you comfortable in labor. Combs is crucial to keeping you comfortable in labor. I have an entire video here that you can check out that goes into the exact comfort measures that I use with my clients, pain management techniques that you can use, practical tips that you can use when it comes to staying comfortable in labor and the tools that you should have in your birth bag. But if you do not understand comfort measures, it's gonna be really hard for you to just be sitting in a hospital bed and expecting that this is going to be smooth. It's not. Movement is key to staying comfortable. Breathing is key to staying comfortable. Trust and fearlessness is key to staying comfortable. All the things that we've already talked about. So understanding what comfort measures are available to you is important because it will allow you to labor unmedicated for much longer. Right, and tip number five is education. Believe it or not, your preparedness for birth and what you do during your pregnancy can impact how much pain you experience. There was actually a study done that showed that women who took childbirth education classes actually appeared and felt more confident in labor, which allowed them to feel more in control of labor because they were educated and that actually helped them experience less pain. And so if you don't believe me, there's research behind this. It is not me just telling you, get educated, get educated. As a woman of color, I knew that I needed to be educated because statistics were not in my favor. But besides that fact, there is so much about this process that we are not being told in our appointments, in our prenatal appointments. There is a holistic approach to birth that is not being taught about in hospital birth classes. It is important that you understand how your entire body plays a role in this process, what your options are, the risks and the benefits to every single intervention that could be introduced to you, when a C-section is necessary, if you do need to get induced, 
all the things that you need to know that we're just not being told. So it's important to get educated because if you're fearful about this process or if you're being pressured into doing something that feels very, very scary, it's gonna be hard to labor confidently and without fear because you are just wondering all about the what ifs. You have to understand what your body does in this process, what your body is capable of, how to stay comfortable, how to keep your mind in the right place. There's so much to learn. It doesn't have to be overwhelming, but you do need to know it so that you can advocate for yourself throughout this process. And hopefully you don't have to utilize all of these tools, but in some cases you might. And I'd rather you know what you need to know than not know what you need to know in the moment. And that was where I was in my first birth, which kind of led me down the path of getting an unnecessary C-section. And if you wanna know about that, I have a whole video on my first birth and all the things that I wish I would have known. And then you can listen and watch my birth story where I gave birth to my son in my driveway because I was just going with the flow of labor and I was so confident in what my body was doing because I knew so much by that point. So it is important to be educated and that your partner is educated too so that all these other tips that we've talked about can be true. All right, that is a lot. I've given you a lot of information. It's probably not the practical stuff that you thought you were getting from this video, but that practical stuff can't happen if this stuff does not happen. Speaking from experience, you gotta do all this work and then all the other tools become easy at that point because you are so confident and prepared for birth that you could deliver this baby on your own. Not saying you should, but if that happened, you could do that too. I've had some clients who've done that on accident, but they knew what they were doing. And then they had home births every single time after that. So you can read about those stories all down in the description below. Nonetheless, I hope this video was helpful. If you want to learn more about comfort measures and how to stay more comfortable in labor with some of the actual tools, check out this video and that will help you lead yourself down and even put some more stuff in your birth bag that you actually are going to use versus all these other like unnecessary hospital bag lists that you're probably checking out on the internet. So if this was helpful for y'all, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed, y'all, please subscribe. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below and I will answer them. And I'll probably even make some more videos with the questions that y'all have so that I can go into depth about all of these things. All right, y'all, that is it for me. I love y'all and I will see you on the next video.